You're not crazy if you're starting to worry that maybe all of today's large pre-internet enterprises might be doomed. A digital tidal wave of change is sweeping the world. Startups and tech companies keep out innovating previously dominant industry leaders. It sometimes feels like today's giant global companies are like poor Gulliver the Giant, who somehow managed to get himself in the position where all these little tiny people have him strapped to the ground and he can't move. And I'm guessing that many of you right now are struggling at large enterprises to try to drive some sort of change, innovation, digital transformation, and it's so hard. Why is it so hard? And what's the secret to getting big companies to successfully transform? FEI has asked me to talk to you about this at their upcoming conference because of the work my company has done to make a lot of big enterprises successful at ambitious digital transformation projects. And because along the way, we've figured out some key things. I'll be presenting at the conference in May along with great people like Dan Heath, author of Switch, and Greg Brandau from Pixar. In fact, Greg, when I see you at the conference next month, here's a film plot I want to pitch you that I think perfectly reflects what's going on at many of today's large global companies. The ice age has arrived and the mammals are like, wow, it's getting a lot colder. We better head south. But the dinosaurs are like, oh, come on, just jump up and down a little bit. That'll warm you up. And soon the dinosaurs are like frozen in glaciers, slowly dying, but they're telling each other, don't worry. According to Wikipedia, our large size will stabilize our body temperature. And speaking of size, did you know it takes an aircraft carrier nine miles to turn around? Think how far nine miles is. But for the carrier to even turn around that quickly, here's a picture of that. If you're on that ship, you're at a pretty steep angle. Probably a lot of dishes sliding around, a lot of seasickness. Change is uncomfortable. If you've ever remodeled your kitchen, it's hell. It's easier to just buy a new house than to live for months with that kind of disruption. So when we get together in Boston next month, we'll talk about the five reasons that companies struggle with innovation and what we're all doing about it. But today, we're gonna to talk about just one. And it's the simple fact that instinctively, people don't really like change. And why should they? Much of the time, change equals pain. The turning of the aircraft carrier, the disruption of the kitchen remodel, the prospect of migrating to a new continent, even if the result is setting us up for a great future, people don't warm up to it for the same reason they don't want to suffer the sacrifices of dieting in order to live longer. And like the dinosaur in the ice, we create stories to make ourselves believe it will all be okay. And warning, you may have a blind spot to understanding this idea that for most people change is aversive. Because as an innovator, you probably like change. The truth is, we're all freaks. And we have to remember that we're in the minority. And to get change made, we need to influence the majority who don't have the same natural enthusiasm for change that you do. And it's critical that you influence them because it's not just that people don't like change. People actively resist change. They rationalize that it's not needed. They passionately warn about its dangers. And if it gets approved, they try to sabotage it if they can. Why? The rank and file fears change will threaten their jobs and for the company management who've built themselves cushy empires. Progress doesn't sound that good when you've already got it good. I learned this the hard way at Blockbuster. 10 years ago, when they were at their peak, my team and I were asked to lead a digital transformation effort to define the future of their business. Needless to say, it was not successful. The vision that we crafted actually looked a lot like Netflix looks today with on-demand video and original programming, so it was pretty on the money. But the people in charge of the stores who really held the power hated it. 
They believed the key to the future was, shockingly, to invest in and improve the store experience. Without their support, the change couldn't succeed. The transformation died, and obviously, so did the company, stores and all. The upside? My team and I learned a heck of a lot that has enabled us to help many other companies since then avoid that fate. Sorry, Blockbuster. I wish I'd have known then what I know now. So how? If people don't like change, how do you get them to change? We'll be going into this with detailed techniques at the conference, but at a high level, four keys. Number one, you have to create a burning platform for change so that not changing feels more painful than changing. Number two, you have to create a compelling future for what it will look like when the change is complete. Number three, a lot of people fear that they will fail at change. You have to give them the confidence that they can be successful. And most importantly, number four, people support the change that they create. You have to give them a chance to be parents of the change, not victims of it. If you like this video, please share it with your colleagues. And in the comments area, I'd love to hear your biggest challenges around change. And I'll incorporate some answers into my remarks at the conference or in one of the upcoming videos. Oh, and connect with me on Twitter or send an email and I'll send you a special money-saving FEI discount code to join us at the conference. Till then, be well, and I hope to see you next month in Boston. <laughs>